Hey everyone, welcome to this new episode. Finally, I am back. Um, I know it's been like three months or something that I haven't uploaded a new video about this project. So I had some troubles with my main channel that uh, saw a drop of 50% in views and um, I decided to upload an extra video. So which video was it? Yeah, the skyscraper crash was intended and the one after that is with the automated uh, level crossing and the whole city around it that was not planned. And I did that because I saw a drop in views and I hoped to compensate a bit. So if you want to know more about this then you should check out my latest video on my main channel. Um, okay, enough about that. I'm back. Um, so that cost a few weeks. Um, but I also made a radical decision on this project. And that is that I noticed that I was, the last five episodes or so, I was just fixing one problem after another. And I ended every episode with, next time we're gonna move some containers. And next time we didn't, because there was another problem popping up. So the whole design wasn't completely reliable. So I made the decision to start all over again. Um, not from scratch, of course, because um, I had already built the nice compressor that I can use again. I also could use the knowledge that I acquired making the first model. And don't worry, I always can go back, of course, because it's right there, it's below the desk. So it's, it's not that. I only um, salvage the, the electronics out of it and, and that's it. So if necessary, I can go back. But I'm gonna tell you that that is not necessary because the crane that I've built right now did actually the job very well. So I decided to go with a new design. But before we get to that, I shot some footage of the building process in which I also explained some decisions I made and uh, how the thing is working and so on. So let's first have a look at that and after that we're gonna see the whole thing working and actually moving containers. So what you see here is the gear rack and it's being extended by the uh, pneumatic cylinders. And um, the combination of a long thin pneumatic cylinder and a short thin pneumatic cylinder combined has the same reach as the uh, gear rack, so that's cool. And um, so that's what I did here as well. I placed on both sides of the uh, gear rack uh, such a combination of pneumatic cylinders. Um, but there's a problem. I can only fix the gear rack on the top. And there is another fixture point over here that you see here. I don't know if you can see it. And, um, but I can't use that since this thing is coming up and the bottom, uh, it's a bit dark, but the bottom of this one here where these two pneumatic cylinders are connected, when, it, when the whole crane is coming up, this point here will actually reach all the way until this red point over here of the uh, gear rack. And because of that, um, I can't fix it on this point right now because also these cylinders are in the way come on focus man yeah also because these cylinders are in the way so um, I need to make a different version of this and that's what you see laying here and um, again I'm using two cylinders parallel because one cylinder uh, doesn't have enough power and what I actually also did is I placed the gear racks perpendicular on each other so they cancel out each other's mechanical play so this works pretty well actually and um, what I'm now gonna do is gonna use this system that you see here in something like what you see here and uh, so this one has to replace the single one that you see there and uh, then we um, we're gonna have a look if it's a bit um, more accurate because right now I didn't show you did I um, it's only fixed up here and because of that you see, I can move it quite a lot when it's extended. And that gives problems. So I need to fix this point here and that's what I'm gonna do with this version here. So this is it. Um, it's one of the most ugliest things I ever made out of Lego, I believe. But it's functional. And as you can see, I've connected the lower side of the uh, red gear rack to the upper side so now it's it's very very stable now it doesn't go anywhere except for this part here which i cannot fix and that isn't a problem 
this is the uh, mechanical play that's within the uh, gear rack but that's uh, within the uh, acceptable range yeah i can't tell you anything more about this i'm just uh, gonna put it on the uh, rack over there and uh, see how it performs so i installed the pneumatic switches and tubing and uh, we're now ready to test it and uh, so let's see what it does i also have an air tank so there's already some air inside and we make it go down we grab it then we put some air in it again make sure it, uh, it's full it's not completely aligned as you can see but that's no problem and then we move it upward and it moves it nicely upward and then we move it in this direction like that now there is a small problem at least i thought it was a problem but it isn't actually and let me show you what i mean so what you see here is that the container cannot pass the other container because it doesn't get high enough the thing is that the monorail wagons are a lot shorter than the train wagons and because of that the places of the containers between the monorail and the train will not be lined out so that means that i have at least surpassed this point here because if the monorail car is here for example i need to make it move over here and go into that direction and at first i always thought that i need to surpass the maximum height of the container as well but you actually don't in this system because we have only two tracks so we do only a load operation or an unload operation and that means that we can handle a certain sequence of containers that we can unload or load and by doing so we don't have to lift the container above the other containers so here's a small explanation on the side of what i just meant so if this is the configuration and we want to load a train we'll just simply don't do something like that but we simply do something like that and that's how we do not have to cross another container but we only have to cross this height over here, which is approximately the same as this warning light here, which actually works. Look at that, how cool. <laughs> anyway, so that's not a problem. And if we want to unload the train, we just do the same thing. That one goes there, that one goes there, and that one goes there. So obviously you cannot do this when you have, for example, in this situation, two monorails next to each other and a train that means you always have to cross something else in case uh, there's another monorail so this is the whole new design and let's start with the motor that runs the uh, whole crane um, that one is still an EV3 motor because um, I need it and I didn't have any big problems with it in the previous design it was mainly the motor of the arm that uh, did go a wire um, but let's get back to that uh, later on um, Have a look at this every wagon has a magnet now and Every monorail car has one as well and I did that so I can now move and position the crane based on the magnets and reed switches on the crane itself it turns out that that is far more accurate than only the rotary encoder of the EV3 motor but I still need the rotary encoder and um, let me show you why because when we're moving containers, we get this container, we pick it up and we move it to the left to place it on the monorail car. The same for this one. We move it a bit to the left and place it on the car. But this one, we need to pick it up, move it to the right and place it on the monorail car. And that's because the train is longer than the monorail and the train doesn't stop in a fixed position like the monorail does so how do you know if you have to go to the left or the right well that's why i use the rotary encoder so when the system starts it always the crane always goes first to the first train wagon so when it arrives at the first train wagon the system resets the um, position to zero and from that point on you know that the second wagon is on position 3000 and the third wagon is on position 6000 and the same goes with the monorail system. The crane goes to the first monorail car. That is a certain position. And based on that, you can add a number for the second car and then add another number for the third car because the distances 
are equal, so that will be those are constant, so those, these will always be the same. So let me explain you with this uh, situation here. Let's say that uh, the crane is over here. It wants to pick up this container, and right now it knows its position. It's, it's at 6,000, and um, it also knows that the third monorail wagon is, for example, at 5,000, and it knows it has to go to the right. Is the monorail wagon, for example, at 7,000? It knows it has to go to the left. And that's uh, how it works. So I do need the rotary encoder, otherwise I don't know which way I have to go with the crane. So I removed the EV3 motor here and it, it's now using a standard Power Functions M motor. And um, I just used two end switches on both sides. Here's a reed switch and a magnet. And also on that side. And um, what it basically does now, it just runs until it sees the um, until the reed switch sees the magnet, and then it stops. And I set it up on a very nice system that I can control the distance very accurately. And by doing so, I can actually position position the uh, crane exactly above and centered above the uh, container. So that works very well. And uh, so I stack the uh, pneumatic system on top of it and uh, there goes a few wires go to the circuit board which is also new. So this uh, printed circuit board, the one on the left is also new. I used a different one before and um, it was a complete mess. So I built myself another one with some more functionalities and um, it it's working just fine. So. So I decided to design an actual printed circuit board like the one that you see there. And um, I'm gonna order it. And um, yeah, I can use it also in other projects. So uh, that was the building process. So the main difference between the two designs is that in the first design I used one crane for offloading and loading. And in the new design I use just one crane for loading and another crane for offloading. And that's because that way I can make the crane a bit less large and uh, I have less errors, and mechanical problems, stuff like that. So the proof of concept that I built is really a proof of concept right now. It, it's, it's not looking as slick as the old one. It's, it's actually pretty ugly, but, but don't worry, I'm gonna work on that. Um, this is just proof of concept to see if it actually works. And if it works, then I'll make it look nice and stuff like that. So without further ado, I'd say let's, uh, let's start up the thing and uh, let's see how it performs. So if you see how smooth it went, 
So it, it works very well. I tried multiple times and every time it did its job like it's supposed to do. So the advantage of having a dedicated train for the offload and the load function is also that this crane in particular has only to offload the containers and that's it. So I can tweak everything um, for the offloading maneuver and the other crane, which will be a copy of this one, I can tweak very well to actually only load the containers. So there are some differences between unloading and loading. Um, for the direction where the crane is coming from and based on that I need to tweak the whole thing and when a crane can come from not only one side but also the other side it makes the whole system a bit more complex well it's it's still very ugly of course so I need to work on that and um, if I fix that I can actually also continue by building the uh, second I would say second crane but now it's going to be the third crane of, or something because you know this is the first crane the second crane will be then the loading crane which I will only build um, when I need it so I, I'm, I'm gonna wait for that and the second crane will be on the other side of the monorail system so that crane will actually move the containers on and off the monorail system and um, it's going to be a, a pretty complex crane. So one of the problems that I had with the old system was that I had to stop the arm at three places. That was loading monorail, unloading monorail and the railway. And by doing so I needed to use an EV3 motor. So for that I used a shield that controls the EV3 motor. But the shield didn't exactly do what I wanted. It, it had, I don't know, it has troubles inside, inside the firmware that, that I cannot touch. And um, that's why I went to this system also because now I have only two positions where the arm needs to stop. So that means that I can actually build a sensor on one side and a sensor on the other side and it moves between these sensors. So the large crane that I want to build has only also two places where it needs to stop, load and unload monorail. Um, but I want to try to stack containers on top of each other in a container yard. And by doing so I need also a vertical system that I need to control accurately because right now I'm doing it with pneumatics and um, well the cylinders basically decide where the end of the action is and so I don't have to control anything that's why I like pneumatics but when I need to stack containers it means that I need to stop at different places in the vertical line so um, that's why I'm gonna need a second EV3 motor in the third crane but before we get to the third crane there's one uh, little variable that um, I'm thinking of right now that we need to test and that is actually um, the variable that the monorail also needs to ride into the station and it needs to stop and it needs to be stopped because right now I'm using a fixed position for the monorail and I checked and yes the monorail always stops at the same position but you can never be sure enough so I need to test that as well. So the start-stop motors of the monorail need to be connected anyhow. So um, I need to work on it as well. So that's going to be the, the, the next episode. And the episode after that we're going to concentrate on building the new crane. So that's going to be exciting. Because then we're, we're actually starting from scratch for a new crane. Which will be blue. <laughs> and um, so yeah, I'm, I'm excited about that. So thank you for watching. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. Have a look at my main channel. Um, share your thoughts. Let me know what you think of it and um, where I can improve things or uh, stuff like that. Uh, just share your thoughts and uh, hope to see you next time. Bye.